Desperate measures are suggested on POK for a seeker to live alone to avoid influences. Can you share the dynamics of how influence propagates like small activity, like accepting gift from someone or just visiting someone? It's a very big topic again, you see. What can I tell you is that as soon as you take something from somebody, you are bound to that person in that event. This much you should remember. The other dynamics are very complicated. They are very complicated. If you remember this much, that as soon as you take something from somebody, you will need to return it. That return means either your life will be diverted in a different direction or you will need to take another birth. You will be born again just to fulfill that um, duty of yours, which you have unknowingly, knowingly taken from somebody else. So it can be a gift, yes. It can be food. It can be water. It can be simply visiting somebody or touching somebody. And that is the influence. You will already see that we are in a big net of influences. We have taken for most of our lives, we have taken from everybody. So miserably trapped here. Just like I was saying a few minutes ago that 99.99% people, they only know taking. They do not know giving and they are forever trapped actually. They will go up and down with the illusion. They will never come out of it. It's not wrong. It's, it's not a bad thing. This is how the nature works. Some will avoid this trap of taking and they will rise above the others. Start giving whatever you have. First to earn it and start giving it away. Best thing to give is knowledge obviously. And then even if you accept something, <laughs> it's, it's, it's minuscule, hardly matters. So, for example, I don't take anything. I don't drink water in other places, in somebody's house. I don't visit anybody. I, I'll do it only if I can give that person 10 times more than they are giving me. So, the balance is always in my favor. Especially avoid taking money. Because money is a shortcut of enslaving your causal body. Yes, somebody serving you, that is their love, isn't it? They are giving you their love. Money means, okay, take my money and be my slave. That is not love. Throwing money at somebody, I don't find that loving. So I never take money. What about gifts? Yes, you know, it is just that thing that you bought from the market for 500 rupees costs 50 rupees actually. <laughs> its packaging makes it 500, isn't it? Branding. Okay, I'll take it. Anyhow, it is produced. Produced means it's already rotten. Snatched from the mother nature. Okay, give it to me. I'll at least give it back to mother nature. If it is not plastic, you see, recycled immediately. <laughs> Usually, whatever I get, get from people, I always distribute them to somebody else. It's not mine. So, that is the biggest thing that you need to be concerned about. About influences from others. Do not take from others. There are three kinds of taking. The first is physical, like money, gifts and the body, no, body of a female and uh, service, somebody does something for you. And the second taking is uh, through the voice, through your speech. Somebody praises you, don't take it. Somebody blames you, accuses you, abuses you, don't take it. Somebody says you are great, okay, leave it there, don't take it. Somebody says you are beautiful, no, no, they don't really mean it, they want something from you and so on, don't take the speech. Then the third is through the thoughts. And you will come to know this only when you advance spiritually, that people are sending you all kinds of thoughts. Don't take them. So avoid three kinds of taking and you will be freed from this infinite net of influences, dependencies and so on. What do you see in the world? only taking <laughs> is give and take only that's why they will never come out of there so this is not path of knowledge on the path of knowledge you do whatever you want to do we accept everything but on the tantric path don't even touch anybody Leila is asking how about gifts from parents yes don't take it why do you want gifts from parents tell me all you want is food and clothes and uh, shelter and that is not taking, that is their responsibility, isn't it? Their responsibility. So there are ways to even pay back those things which your parents have done. 
so pitrun whatever you call it in sanskrit i don't know any english words for that you need to pay it back by serving your parents back little bit symbolic service if you want if you don't want to serve for them for whole life and mentally you return it back whatever they have done for you and the best way to not take is not to be born as humans as soon as you are born from the humans you take milk from the mother a bond is formed you take food and protection from the father a bond is formed you see you take toys from your older brother the bond is formed then you take education from your teacher the bond is formed you know, although you pay a little bit but still the bond is there both are bound and so on you see the biggest and the worst kind of bond is marriage and that is the worst sweety says can getting knowledge from someone also bind us yes if the knowledge is of worldly kind it will bind you if it is of the spiritual kind and given by the guru then it will free you very easy do you do you feel bound when you receive the self realization or anything or any other basic knowledge oh you feel free the guru has absolutely nothing to give he, he only pretends that he, he is giving <laughs> you are whole and complete already did you get anything extra no the guru actually took the guru snatched all the ignorance from you i mean the guru is not taking it to keep it you know he takes it to destroy it so a different kind of taking bearing is called bearing so now you know who you are you are not covered by all this rotten garments of all kinds so no actually this uh, topic goes so deep that uh, it will take many hours for me to explain because sometimes the guru will fo- form the bonds with the student because he knows that if there is no bond between me and the student the student is not going to actually love me not going to respect me he will never progress so the <laughs> guru traps the student in a relationship and which lasts for many many lifetimes so till the student grows enough the guru is with the student all the time so the, the guru and student relation is the only one that is purest and will last forever actually whatever forever means you know we are already one forever so there are that is the ultimate relation of oneness but there are fake relations now and the least fake is the guru and the student that is selfless so i know guru is a very very difficult creature to understand i could not understand even one guru of mine properly and it causes a lot of fear in the minds of students that <laughs> guru is ungraspable so what the guru does is you know assumes a smaller form where now he become pretends to be a ordinary human now it is graspable graspable you know, i learned this from ishwar puri who is my guru that's why i say guru lies all the time all lies only if he present presents his real form to you you will run away so what what does the guru do becomes a little innocent <laughs> idiotic person now people accept him yes he is just like me so whatever is needed we do it isn't it but uh, the guru will free you nobody else everybody will bind you only the guru will free you and that is why so much importance the guru is placed above the gods why the gods also bind you <laughs> ask them anything any favor and you will be you will enter in a very very long term relationship with that god with the deity of yours that is so long you can say infinite gone so even the guru won't touch this thing if it fails then you're freed then the guru will pick you up do we touch these people who are who are in the devotional paths and all this you know worshiping deities and all i never touch them <laughs> i tell them look the path of knowledge is the worst kind you will not get anything is intellectual garbage love your god love your deity surrender to that and we leave them something or somehow they will come out of it after 1 million years and then i'll be in a position to help them so lela is asking are we not already bound to our parents how do we get out of this bondage yes you are bound to your parents since probably thousands of births not only you are bound to parents you are bound to your children you are bound to your um, siblings and neighbors and your community your religion your race everything 
It's all a bondage. Many layered, multi layered bondage. How do we get out of this bondage? Realize that you are the one who is free. Realize that this creature is bound, this illusory individual is bound. You are free. You are freedom yourself. Very easy. Mary is saying, How to return to clean the touching, return or clean the touching bond? Is it possible without, without rebirth? Yes, it is possible. Forgiving. Oh, I made a mistake by taking something from you or expecting something from you. Mistake. Now mentally forgive. Mentally break the bonds. Because the bondage is of mind only, not of the body. You don't need to do anything physical to break the bond. And if your mind is not convinced like this, you can ritualize. You can make a small ritual and use that ritual to break the bond. It can be cutting of a string, burning of a rope and so on. Sometimes I prescribe this kind of rituals and uh, they work <laughs> you see, because it's mind only, it's illusion. The illusion works in the illusion. So there are occult ways to break all the bonds, although it is not recommended. But in extreme cases, when the bondage becomes painful, we do it. Yes. Like he was asking that, will the guru do something which is beyond my perception? Yes. <laughs> you don't even know what the guru is doing behind your back. Although you need to ask for it. If it is not your wish, the guru will never do it. Even if you are suffering, the Guru will not do it. The Guru will produce a hint. Do you want this? Do you really want this? Again, third time I am asking. Yes, yes. Okay then, take it. Now who knows what happens after that, but the cleaning happens. Clean up happens. How do we do it? When you advance spiritually, how do you do it? Through detachment. You form a bond with complete detachment and it is as good as no bond, no bondage. Or you dip yourself in the bondage and then you ask your guru to pull you out. Or you set up an intention, alarm clock to pull you out of it. I have done these kind of experiments, they are kind of energy draining. You come out of this bounded relation with a significant loss of energy, life force. Your body will age a little bit more, your health will go down, your mental health will suffer, your intelligence will be little less and that is the price we pay of for diving into a bound relation with somebody. So it better produce some good results, like it should produce a result where the other person has progressed spiritually at the cost of your time and energy. Otherwise even the Guru field won't support this kind of adventure. Probably I told you too much. Vipin is saying, isn't death the ultimate giving? Returning to environment as ultimately everyone, everyone has taken from environment. Death should balance all. No, death is a small part of what is happening as give and take. Only the physical layer, in the lowest layer of the being is returned to the environment. You know that, isn't it? The higher layers, they are still receiving. <laughs> they are receiving since many lifetimes. So what do we say? The real liberation, not, not we, some people will say, some other parts, that the real liberation is when the causal body is dissolved. Because you see their knowledge is unlimited to the causal body, they have seen only this much. So they say it, like Vipin is saying, no, isn't it all freedom after death? Because his knowledge is limited only to the physical body. He is not even seeing beyond that. So people assume, okay, the causal body is the ultimate and if it is dissolved, you know, freedom. Now I'll tell you the truth, there is no freedom for the creature. You are free. Not this human thing or any other thing that will evolve out of it. It will be always be bound. Yes, the layers after layers, they will be dropped and assumed and so on. You see, who knows what happens here. <laughs> very, very complicated scene here. But one thing is certain. That which is bound will remain bound. That which is free will remain free. Enjoy. Praveen is asking, I have heard that uh, giving and taking both have consequences led to rebirth is right. Yes, that's what I'm explaining. Yes. yes, giving also has consequences because the other person is bound now. Who is the other person? You. You are all. All creatures are within you. So the ideal thing is to not give and not take. Is it possible? No. So the next ideal thing is to make it beneficial for everybody. 
isn't it? That is the beauty, you see. That is where the fun is. Become so greedy that everybody benefits from this giving and taking. This is called the Bodhisattva Vritti. He is ready to do anything to liberate others. In liberating all, nobody is liberated. <laughs> So, not to worry too much, you see. The only thing is you should take care that it's not causing suffering of any kind. If you are bound and it is causing suffering, get rid of it immediately. There are more, you know, much better ways to be bound and enjoy. The bondage is not always bad. But ultimately it turns, you see, breaks. Ultimately it turns into suffering. Because impermanence, isn't it? Duality, oscillation, pendulum. Anything that goes up will go down and then suffering will come. So let's not uh, take it too high so that you don't need to go too low. And you can ride this wave of high and low with equanimity. Is there any other way to live? No. This is the only way to live. Nothing dissolves. Nothing liberates. You are that which you are already. Now it's all a play. And how beautifully you play, how beautifully you execute your karma is your skill now, your spiritual growth, seen by that. Leila is saying, cycle of rebirth seems unavoidable. No, you can leave your um, birth and death today if you want, isn't it? Yes, the bondage is unavoidable. But you see, the death and birth is just one kind of bondage. Actually, you see from the point of view of the Brahman, it is taking forms, it is producing worlds and all, you see, creatures and so on. Like we say it roughly. Isn't that the bondage that it has to do it anyhow? But no, that is, you should not, we should not use our intellect here to conclude something like this. It is simply happening and the Brahman is totally okay with it. It's a play for it. In the end, nothing is bound, nothing is liberated, nobody is taking birth, there is no rebirth, nothing is happening. So this human rebirth, totally avoidable, totally unnecessary. The goal of the human birth is to Get rid of the human birth. Evolve from here. Once you are in a good position, you see, like you have become an angel, god or whatever higher being, then stop worrying about it, you know. What is it? <laughs> what is what is the value of freedom and bondage there? When you are in ultimate bliss and your all desires are fulfilled instantly. It is like a meaningless, meaningless existence also, but you don't need any freedom there. You are not, you don't feel bound there in finite freedom. So you see, the creature finds a meaning by escaping the bondage, by escaping the struggle. Otherwise, there is no meaning in this life. So it knowingly comes down and takes a bound form like the human. So that answers your many questions like, we are so powerful, we are like knowledgeable and wise and all. And still we come down as this tailless, hairless monkey for what? And the real adventure is in getting trapped and then getting released. You must have seen this in the movies, you see. The hero is helplessly trapped, helplessly about to be killed and then he's rescued or something, he does something marvelous, <laughs> great adventure, he rescues it himself and the heroine also and kills the villain bad guys in the process. So, the falling is not really falling, it is an adventure. The problem is, it is happening in darkness, you don't know what you are doing. And that is causing real suffering, you see. The, the fake illusion produces real suffering, which we don't like. So there is no rebirth, nothing to be avoided. It is your adventure, realize this, enjoy. Praveen is saying, either we have to give or take to sustain. In both ways, we are indulging ourselves in cycle of death and birth. How we can escape this cycle? It's mere the realization of detachment from one's of works. Just now I answered it. You are never bound. This form is bound and it is necessary for it to be bound. Otherwise, it will not remain a form. What is a form? It is formed, which means there are some laws, there are some rules, there, are, there is some substance. And it has to remain that way for most of the time. It cannot do this, it cannot do that. That is, that is what you call bondage, isn't it? That is what you call bondage. And the cycle of death and birth is one part of it. You don't even know what is death, death, death and birth. It is like scratching of the paint, repainting, <laughs> something similar. 
the causal body is like a mountain and this physical body is you know just dry leaf on it comes and goes why do you worry so much get the knowledge there is a, you don't even need to be detached knowledge produces detachment and once there is knowledge everything is good there is no bondage and there is no freedom i am already bound and i am already free and i am both and i am all now you can indulge now indulge totally <laughs> there is nothing else to do you are here for infinite amount of time what will you do you are the whole existence by doing everything we do nothing isn't it 